that land. I've got a mother in that land. I've got a mother in that land where I'm bound. Peace and joy in that land. Peace and joy in that land. Peace and joy in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Peace and joy in that land. Peace and joy in that land. Peace and joy in that land where I'm bound. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Come and Amen. 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 Come and go to that land. Amen. Peace and joy in that land. Yeah. Yeah. Peace and joy in that land. Yeah. Every day is going to be Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Every day is going to be Sunday. Yeah. Sabbath will have no end. Yeah. Amen. 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 We have scripture by Brother Cousin. Hey. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Time is getting close. I hear that train. It's starting up. Amen. Amen. You know, we didn't get put on earth to be here forever. All right. We put here to be faithful yeah. and be obedient to the Lord. All right. Because we never know when a day the Lord is going to call us home. Yes, sir. That's, right. That's right. But you know, we are going home. Yeah. Right. One yeah. day. Yeah. So, what we're here today for is to try to prepare ourselves. That when the Lord does come by, yeah. he would say, my child, mm -hmm. job well done. That's yeah. right. That's right. I'm going to be reading out Colossians chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I'll give you a little time to get that. It's just one thing I want to say. I, I, went, I see the devil in action yesterday, and I, I was fishing. And I wasn't feeling too good. And one of my buddies I know come over. He said, how you doing, Brother Raymond? I said, I'm doing fine. He said, come here. I walked to him, and he put his hand on my head and started praying for me. Mm, all right. You know, so all right. like I say, we have church out there on our fish bank. And he prayed for me, prayed for me. About an hour later, I started feeling so good. Because I was telling him how terrible I felt. Amen, amen. You know, I was aching all over. And I was trying to get my emotions and things together. And he prayed for me. About an hour later, I started feeling real good. Yes, sir. <laughs> then, here come the devil. All right. The guy come over, you know, the young man, he had a heart attack, and he's going through hard times, and he had lost his car. And he was telling me about everything. So he asked this one little guy, he said, will you give me a ride home? The guy said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking you home. He said, well, brother, please take me home. He said, I just want to go home. And he was telling him about what happened to him everything. And the first thing that old Melvin said, you're smoking that stuff again, ain't you? I said, Lord, have mercy. Amen, amen. That young man, now he ain't young, he about 65. He went in a war on that tree. First he told him, he said, the longest you live, don't you ever ask me that question again. 
He said, God delivered me from that. All right, all right. He went over and walked up in that tree, and I seen him over crying. I was wondering what he was crying for. Then Melvin come over and started talking to me, looking all crazy and stuff. So Melvin went and started talking to his truck. And my buddy, old Pearl, come walking around. He said, remember, I told you. I didn't ever want you to say that to me because God had blessed me from that. Yeah, yeah. He brought me from a long, long way. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So he started charging Melvin. And Melvin took, turned around, took off running and said, what's the matter? He said, man, I love God. All right. Me and two other dudes just started. Tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. but that just shows you the devil's always working, man. Always. I mean, he, he yeah. showed me. He, he gave me a... On his phone, something where his granddaughter was singing a church song. I mean, we was out there, me and uh, the other guy named Kenny. We were praising the Lord, clapping our hands. But the devil always step in. <laughs> Never takes a vacation. Never, Never take a break. And I said, Lord, I'm it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But he got old Melvin in his truck, and Melvin took off flying because he was at the Melvin. He had a knife out this long. I said, don't do it, bro. Don't do it. He said, man, he said, Amen. this man just had broke my heart. <laughs> He wants to take me back where I was, but he don't know where I was. I'm trying to go. Yeah, that's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we calmed him down and everything, you know. Everything was all right. But would y'all please stand for God's word? I'm sorry about sharing my story, but. Amen. But everywhere I go, I praise the Lord. God is good. God I, don't is good. I don't care if it's a grocery store, a fishing bank, a yeah. filling station. When God is good to you, you have to lift him up. Yes, sir. And say yeah. thanks. Yeah. I didn't feel good last week, yeah. but I feel good this week. All right. Amen. God's being good to me. Amen. And uh, if y'all have it with y'all, please uh, stand and say amen. amen. And uh, it's two, uh, Colossians verses 2 through 4, and it says, To the saint and the faithful brethren in Christ, which are Colossians, grace be upon you mm -hmm. and the peace for God our Father yeah. and Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We give thanks to God. Yeah and the Father of our Lord Jesus All right. Christ, praying always for you, mm -hmm. praying always for you, yeah. since we heard your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, mm. for the hope that which is lie upon you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. I just read to y'all Colossians 2 through 5, may the Lord add a blessing in the reading and hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. 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 Brother Powell, for prayer. May we all bow for a, for a moment of prayer. Yes, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, as we are few of thy children who have once again assembled ourselves together in your name, we yeah, come asking yeah. that you would allow your spirit to enter in to this sanctuary yes, Lord. into our hearts and our minds mm -hmm. to, Help me. Help me. to <laughs> be able to lift up your name yes. And yes. give praise to a God who has been good and Lord kind Jesus. to us a, a God who has been better to us than we have to ourselves yes sir yes, 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 yes. we come this day, all mm -hmm. right. All right. thanking you for how you took us all by our various hands. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You allowed us to get through last Sunday, and you allowed us to walk through Monday. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You allowed us to wake up again Tuesday. Yeah. And Father, here we find ourselves. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> here we find ourselves. Yes, help, Lord, yes, help, yes, help. Yes, yes to be able to look upon this a new day. Yeah. yeah. A day that we have never seen before. Yes, yes. Father, we come thanking you for Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank not you. only how you have watched over us and kept yeah. us, but how you watched over our children, mm -hmm. yes. our parents, and Help us, Lord. Help our us. grandparents, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Thank you, yes, Lord. our neighbors. Yeah. And then, honey, Father, mm -hmm. those who are in hospitals and Lord have mercy, mercy, Lord have mercy. Homes mercy, mercy. who have called upon you and yes, Lord Jesus. you have allowed your spirit to flow through the various hospitals. All right, yeah. Men broken hearts and 
fix broken minds. Yes. Yes. But Heavenly Father, it hasn't always been bad. You've uh, Mercy, allowed Lord. us to Mercy. smile. You've allowed yes. us. Yes. Yes. You've allowed us to smile. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. And to laugh and yes. to know yes. that you are God and, oh, yes. mm -hmm. and that uh, that you are God that can be with us in times of sorrow. Yes, and Lord Jesus. You're also a God who. Hmm. who, who who enjoys being with us all right all during right. our happy times and our Thank joyous you, times Thank you, Lord. Yeah. and worship and as we commune with our various mm. brothers and sisters throughout the week yes father we pray and ask that you would cover us please you lord cover please, us with your please. spirit yes, yes sir lord jesus. we know that you know what's going on throughout this world that yeah we're, that we're in Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. We as men and women, uh, uh, well, you know, you mm -hmm. know us yes. better than he we knows. know ourselves. Yes, yes. yes Lord. Help us, so Lord. Father, Help us. I'm asking that you would continue to uh, allow your spirit to to flow through the please, hearts Lord. and men. Please, yes. Yes. please. Us, but as Help your us. spirit flows through the various hearts of men mm -hmm. and women, that we would yield to your will. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Then, Heavenly Father, as we're about mm. here, as our pastor is about to stand before, all right, this, all right, all right. before this waiting congregation, mm -hmm. yes. we, Heavenly Father, we pray and ask yes. that you would help give him strength. Yes. That help he'll him. be able to stand. And, yes. Yes. Touch him, Lord. That he'll Touch be able to stand him. and reach down into your word. Yes. And, all right. And stand before this waiting congregation. But not only this waiting congregation yes. at this site, but we pray and ask that the words that he preaches will fall mm -hmm. on fertile ground. Yes, yes, sir. Lord, yes, yes, sir. Yes. That we and men, as men and women, will come to the realization of knowing that you are God. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. We're able to do more than what we could ever think yes. or do. And then also, Heavenly Father, as we stand and some sit, all right. And we come asking, we come asking. That in our dying hour, yeah. That in our yes, sir. dying hour, yes, sir. That, thou, that thou would be there, yes, yes, to receive yes. our various Please, yes. Yes. yes, that we too, that we too, along with all those other saints, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Lord, that we would able to allow to choose through mm -hmm. your will would allow us all right. to allow our eyes to gaze, but gaze upon our God, yeah, who has been good and kind to us throughout the years and. Good God. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you this day. Yeah. yeah. And we pray that you open up our hearts. Yes, yes sir. Lord. Yes, sir. Lord. Praise you. Please, Lord. And shut out the world. Yeah. And focus our hearts and our minds on mm -hmm. you. We make these various petitions. Not only yeah. my petitions, but those who sit and those who stand. All right. We pray that you will hear their various petitions and requests. Mm -hmm. That we all ask them all yes. in the name of thy son, Jesus. In the name Christ. of Jesus. Name. Yes, sir. In the name, yes. In the name of our, our, yeah. our son. Yeah. Yes. Our Savior. Yeah. yeah. Jesus the Christ. Yes. yes, sir. And we all said, Amen. 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 I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised to him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I was a lone and idol. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took the
battlefield for yes. the Lord. Yes. He's been good to us, church. Yes. Yes. He's been good to us, church. Oh, yeah. We should all give him praise. Yeah. This is the only place that has no unemployment. There's a job for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. We can all do something for the Lord. Yeah, yeah. We can all do something for the Lord. Yeah. He's been too good. Too good. He's too been good. too good. Now, if you haven't done anything for you, you don't have nothing to shout about. But for me and my house, yeah. me and my house, yeah. we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. He's been too good. too good. He's been too good. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. The situations in this life and what we deal with, sometimes it makes you feel like you're on a battlefield. You know, on a battlefield, you have to cry out for help sometimes. Sometimes you got to say, oh God, thou art my God. Early I seek thee. My soul thirsts after thee. My flesh long for thee. As if I were in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen. Up here in the sanctuary of Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. My lips shall praise thee. My hands shall be raised to thee. All the days of my life. And one of these old days, I'm going to dwell. I'm going to sit right down and dwell in the house of the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning is the Lord's Son. It's on the viewer. The Lord's Son. Please stand for the scripture reading. I'll read the first verse. You'll read the verse after me, and the last verse we'll all read together. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye also often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. For if that, for if he eateth and drinketh unworthily, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, I said if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one another all together. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen, amen. I follow our scripture reading. Please be seated. We're ready for our corporate prayer. Precious and heavenly Father, we come humbly this morning. 
We thank thee, O oh Lord, for our lying down and our waking up this morning. For it was you, Father, that woke us up. And you gave us new mercy for today, for the foolishness and mistakes we made yesterday. O oh Lord, we thank thee. Father, we thank thee for this house that we may come and publicly display our affection for you. O oh Lord God, help each and every one of us. Father, we need thee. Father, the officers of this church need thee. The youth of this church need thee. The elders of this church need thee. Father, those who are sick and shut in, we pray for them. And Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would touch them and be a doctor in their sickness. Father, we ask for prayer for those who are locked away in prison. We ask for prayer for those, Father, that are our sister churches that speak only in the truth of thy name. And Father God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will touch our pastor this morning. Father, allow him to speak what you have poured into him. Allow him not to be shaken or moved in any shape or form, but speak that truth. And Father, give us the ears and the eyes to understand that truth and hear that truth and use that truth to help us in this journey. For you said our help coming from the hills. And Father, we look to the hills right now. We need thee, O oh Lord. And Father, we come with thanksgiving always. Because it's been your goodness for us. Your kindness to us is better than life. And all of God's children said amen. Our sermon scripture reading this morning. from Amos. Please stand for the scripture reading. Amos chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. And it'll be up on the screen. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgressions and bring your sacrifice every morning and your tithes after three years, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offering. For this liken you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord. And I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet, I said, yet have ye not returned unto me, said if the Lord. And also I have withholded the rain from you when, when they were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the peace whereupon it rained it, not withered. So two or three cities wanted unto one city, wandered into one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me. I said, yet ye have not returned unto me. I have smited you with blasting and mildew where your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses. 
and I have made the stench of your camps to come up into your nostrils. Yet ye have not returned unto me, said of the Lord. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrows Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet ye have not returned unto me. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he that formed the mountains and increased the winds and declared unto man what is his thoughts, that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Pressing upon our godly reading this morning, please be seated. Ha <laughs> 
from high. Amen. I believe somebody knows the Lord will make a way somehow. I think there's some believers in here where the Lord has opened some doors and made some ways when out of no ways. When the load got heavy and the burden was hard to carry, the Lord made a way somehow. I don't know about you, but it's been like that. When you're just about ready to give in, the Lord will make a way somehow. To God be the glory. From whom all blessings flow. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord once born and again. I thank you for your texts and your prayers. I feel a whole lot better than last week. The Lord will make a way somehow. And on last week, it wasn't nothing but the Spirit because I was not here. But God made a way somehow. He's a good God. He makes a way. He, 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 I think somebody said he's better to us than we are to ourselves. Maybe it's just me. I mean, sometimes I don't think I can make it, but the Lord seems to just somehow give you that strength. You know, in our weakness, he is, makes us strong. So we thank God for all his blessings, and he's been blessing us this week. Uh, good news, Sister Red is at home now, Sister Jackie Red. We want to thank God for his blessings upon her. Sister Maddie Hunter just had a birthday, talked to her, all is well. So we just thank God for all these things. I mean, when we don't even know, God is making ways when we don't even know. You know, we are, we, when God made a way for us to get here today, you don't even know. Somebody wanted to be here that couldn't even be here this morning. So we're going to thank God for all that he is doing, all that he has done, and all that he shall do in this place. So God bless each and every one of you on this day. There is a word for the Lord on this day. There is a word for the Lord on this day. Coming to us from the book of Amos, we have read several verses. I just want to key in on the last two verses that you're hearing of God's word. You may be stay seated. Just going to read the last two verses of the text, and this is what the Lord says he said therefore thus I will do unto thee O Israel because I will do this unto you prepare to meet thy God for he is the one who forms the mountains he's the one who created the winds He's the one that put the thoughts in the man. He makes the morning dark. He treads the high places of the earth. The Lord, the Lord of hosts, that's his name. I want to talk this morning about a preparation for confirmation. A preparation for confirmation. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we hear from him. Most gracious and all wise God. It is again your children come surrendering to the throne of grace. Thanking you first, O oh God, for watching over us on last evening. That as we slept and slumbered, we knew everything was all right because you are God who never sleeps nor slumber. And right early this morning, you touched us with a finger of love. That we come in saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we come to rejoice and be glad in it because, God, you have been good. We pray on now, oh Heavenly Father, that we just open up our hearts and minds to hear from you. That whatever someone's going through, you can get to through them. If there's anything going to change situation, it's a word from God. If it's anything that's going to solve some problems, it's a word from God. If it's any brain that's going to reconcile certain things, it's going to be a word from you. So, Lord, we pray all down that you open up the windows of heaven, 
pour out a blessing upon each and every one of us. Your children are listening, oh Father God. Speak to us, oh God. We need you and we just can't make it without you. Somebody's on the rage of a breakdown, oh God, but let them know it's about to be a breakthrough. We pray, oh Father God, for each and every one right now. Speak to us. That when we leave from here, we'll leave better than the way that we came. We'll leave here knowing we serve a true and a living God. We'll leave here knowing that we're more than a conqueror. We'll leave here walking by faith and not by sight. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said amen amen and amen talking about a preparation for confirmation there are various ways to prepare ourselves one might have to prepare yourself to come in this morning Preparation for a good day, preparation for a bad day, preparation for work, preparation for school, preparation for anything that happens in life. We got to prepare for crisis. We got to prepare for good days. We got to prepare for illnesses. We got to prepare for death. We have to prepare for natural disasters. Preparation is part of life. And if you don't properly prepare, you can get caught off guard. I remember a junior year in high school and we were the number one team at a tournament and we knew that we were better than any team and so we didn't practice like we normally practice. We didn't do what we normally do. We just went through the motion and then come game day because we did not prepare, we did not win. Because if you don't prepare, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So, so preparation is a part of life. The definition of preparation is a process of making ready. Our, our slang slogan is, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Preparation is part of life. I remember growing up, we had to prepare for Sunday on Saturday. We had to put our clothes out on the bed. And, and mama and them would be cooking for Sunday on Saturday. See, see, that's what they was really cooking. See, they wasn't microwaving food back then. They, they had to prepare some stuff. They had to mix some stuff up and put it in the oven. It took some time. You had to prepare some stuff. And so in life, we have to prepare for life survival. We prepare our children to grow up to go to school, to go off to college and prepare to live their lives. We prepare our jobs to, go, to have an income to be success. Life is all about preparation. But the trouble with preparation is that in some situations, in some scenarios, will come and you will not be ready. But one thing for sure, that each one of us is going to need to prepare to meet the Lord. There's going to be a judgment day for each and every one of us. Because the Bible says every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. So there's a preparation and how you prepare will decide on your eternal destiny. The Bible says, therefore, be ye ready, also ready, for if such an hour come, the, not the Son of Man cometh. That means we've got to learn to prepare for the Lord like this is our last day. Like if you're waiting for next week to give God some praise or you're waiting for something to happen before you get surprised, you better give him praise. Be prepared to give him praise because tomorrow is not promised. And so in this fourth book of Amos, this, he gives two prophetic declarations. He says, prepare for the Lord and prepare to return to the Lord. See, in those days, Amos had a declaration of the love of God and the fact that God reigns and God rules. And the same thing still is relevant today. God still reigns and God still rules. But, but the problem was that God was so good to the people. 
uh, they had a lot of success and they had a lot of prosperity in the nation of Israel and the people began to gradually move away from God and started doing the desires of their heart and started wanting to be like the lifestyle of the rich and famous. They idolized their finance, they idolized their furniture, they idolized their home, they idolized their car. They were in the pursuit of happiness instead of the pursuit of holiness. The, their pleasures began to supersede their interest in God. Uh, they would come into the house of worship and they would sit for an hour and they wouldn't say a word. They would come into the house of God and they wouldn't clap their hands. They would come into the house of God. They wouldn't stand their feet. They were superseding their interest in God because they was living good. They, they was living their best life. Uh, the, the, on the Sabbath day, they, they would come in and no longer was a joyful occasion. They were just performing people in the pews and sinful saints in the sanctuary. And nobody wanted to give God praise because God had been so good to them. The, the closeness that they once had when, when they was in poverty because there's something about being broke that'll get you close to God that when you got money, you seem like you don't need God. But God said, you know what? He said, I saw what you was doing. Uh, you, you, you needed me and I blessed you. And then in verse two, he said, I saw this and I'm gonna keep to my promise. I'm gonna hold you to what I said. So he begins to send some messages to him to give the word to him. He said, well, what have you done? You have left your first love. He said, it's time to return back to your first love. And the text today discuss about a, a, a prophet that he sent by the name of Amos. He, he sent to prepare the people with a confirmation that the Lord said it's time to return to the Lord. And brothers and sisters, I stand today to tell you, if you have not, it's time to return to the Lord. I, I, I know God been good to you. I can look out and look at you and see you're looking better than you ever had. You're driving better than you ever had. You're living better than you ever had. You're smelling better than you ever had. But it's time to return to the Lord. So, so God sends Amos, and Amos is the third of the 12 minor prophets. This was around 7, 750 B.C. during the ring of Jeroboam. Amos is the first prophetic book of the Bible, older than Hosea and Isaiah. Amos is the book, first one to say, this is the day of the Lord. Amos, through his home, was in Judah. God sent him to Israel. He was from a town called Toka, T-E-K-O-A, a small town six miles from Bethlehem, 11 miles from Jerusalem. And the prophet had denounced to these Gentiles that God was not happy with the way they was living. They, they had begun to sin and didn't have any guilty conscience from sinning. So the central idea was Amos was to go tell them and see, a lot of people, they didn't want to believe Amos. They didn't want to trust Amos because Amos was just a herdsman. But, but, but God sent Amos to let him know that I put all my people on the same level, on the same playing field. I give them the same opportunity. So I need you to go tell this nation they better get back to purity and responsibility. So Amos prepares them with the preparation of confirmation if you don't return to the Lord. Now, now Amos, he, he wasn't a trained prophet. He was a herdsman. So if you got your Bibles, he, he, he starts off with, we're talking about the women. He called them a C-O-W because he was a herdsman. And in those days, a, 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 a healthy C-O-W meant wealth. See, see, in those days, so he's saying, you, you wealthy people, you healthy people, you, you rich people, you have turned away from God. And he was not on the high course like Isaiah. He wasn't a member of the priestly family like Jeremiah and Ezekiel. So they wouldn't want to listen to him. You know how some people are. When we have visiting preachers, we got to read their bio. If the bio ain't long enough, we ain't going to think they lying or they ain't telling the truth oh, because they ain't got a good bio. But he said, God sent me, and that's all you need to know. So Amos may not have had proficiency and competency, 
And, and you could tell in the language that he used, but uh, he had availability. See, God doesn't always call the qualified, but he qualifies the ones he calls. And, and brothers and sisters, it's all about the one who does the calling, which is more important than the one who's been called. Because the one who's been called is talking about the one who called him. So you shouldn't listen to the one who's been called, but you should listen to the word of the one who called him. Oh, see, that's an early amen because it might be some Amos in here. You might not have the pedigree and the accolades or the influential resume. You might not just be a Harrisman, but you might not have all that stuff going on. But you know the Lord and you know what the Lord has done for you. Uh, you might not be everywhere you want to be in life. You may not be the cream of the crop. You might have more, more struggles than struggles. But I stopped by with good news. God puts us all on the same level. For my Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. My Bible says, whosoever will come after me, deny himself, pick up their cross and follow me. My Bible says, who will all men be saved? Come unto the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God, one mediator between God and man, and the man Jesus Christ, who came and gave himself a ransom for all people. So no matter what you've done, God can use you. We got to quit saying, well, I remember what they used to do. Remember what you used to do. What are you saying, Reverend? I'm saying, even if you messed up, even if you done wrong, even if you took some wrong turns in life, God can still order your steps, put you back on the straight and narrow, pick you up, turn you around, put your feet on solid ground. We serve a God who is merciful that forgives, a God that worked with the righteous and the unrighteous. He worked with the blessed and the burdened. He worked with the delivered and the disobedient. He worked with the hopeful and the hopeless. He worked with the sinner and the saint. He worked with the right and the wrong. He worked with the rich and the poor. He worked with the black and the white. He worked with the Mexican, Puerto Rican, Afghanistan, everybody. He worked with all of us, everybody. He puts us all on the same level. So Amos said, I'm just a herdsman, but I'm a spokesman for the priest I got. And he said, I declare that if you keep on living unfaithful, you keep being disobedient, you keep being covered and breaking, if you don't return to the Lord, God is going to have his way. So in chapter 1 and 2, Amos talks to the nation of Israel. In chapter 3 and 6, he talks to the leaders of Israel. In chapter 7 and 9, he talks about his vision. But here in chapter 4, he is talking to the women and the man of Israel to get them from all of their unfaithfulness and forsaken. They had turned away from God. And he has said, you are wealthy. You're rich. You, 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 but you are oppressed the poor, and you have crushed the needy. And in this text, these women was not directly involved with the mistreating of the poor, but their demand to tell their husband, I need this. I need that. I got to have this. She got that, so I got to have that. They drive that, so I got to drive that. You see, they doing that, so I got to do that. So they came materialistic attitude, and it, the only way the man could keep up, they had to take it from the poor. See, see, when people are addicted to a certain lifestyle, they do things that's unnatural. I, 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 when the Lord has blessed you so well, you forget how you grew up with the fan in the window. You forgot when you only had one TV in the house. So, so, so see, see that, 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 we, we, we know people like that now. I, I mean, I ain't talking about nobody here, but somebody you got clothes in the closet with tags still on it. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Somebody got shoes they feet ain't never been in. God has been good to you. 
And this is the way these women were living. These was the first episode of the real housewives of Israel. <laughs> they, 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 they just wanted everything, all the good stuff. But the Bible says God was not pleased. See, see, God is not particularly interested in how you look. God is not particularly about how many likes you get online. God is pleased with your life, not your likes. God is pleased with your love, not your likes. And so Amos said, the Lord has sworn by his holiness that the day shall come that they're going to take you away on fish hooks and take all of your stuff on fish hooks if you don't return to the Lord. Now, when the Lord swore, that means it's a guarantee that judgment would come. Well, how do you know? Because God does not lie. And his holiness would not allow sin to go unpunished. So, so he, Amos tells him, you've got to get back to getting excited about God. It used to be, if we grew up, we used to be a thirst for the church. You couldn't wait to get to church on Sunday morning. You come in on Sunday morning, wasn't no room to sit on Sunday morning. When you come in on Sunday morning, they were shouting from the beginning all the way to the end because they knew what the Lord has done for them. But people and got so sadiddy and got so blessed that now we come in here and we don't want to give God no praise. We don't want to tell God what God been done for me. You better return to the Lord and remember what God has done for you. Amos said, you got to get back to following God. You got to get back to listening to God. You got to get back to calling on the name of God. You got to get to trusting God. You got to get to believing in God. For Matthew said, these people had honored me with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. They had forgotten what God had done. It's a dangerous thing to forget what God has done. It's a dangerous thing to forget where your help comes from. It's a dangerous thing to forget we've come this far by faith. It's a dangerous thing to forget that all of our blessings come by the Lord. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. It's a dangerous thing to forget because if we be real, it wasn't too much long ago we wasn't even in church. We was in the middle of a pandemic, and God has brought us back. We better not forget, because the same God that did it before will do it again. And I believe he did that to get our attention. So don't forget just because we're back in the house of God. So he said they had forgotten about the great miracles that he brought them out of Egypt. They had forgotten that he brought them through the wilderness. They had forgot he gave a manna from heaven. They had forgot about the law of the covenant. They had forgot he drove his enemies away. They had forgot about the promise he gave to Abraham. And they began to do other things than to trust in the Lord. It's a dangerous thing. When God has moved you from trouble to triumph, moved you from dilemma to delight, moved you from problem to pressure, and in return, you can come in and be sitting on your blessed assurance. Say it. Okay. We tried Say, it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Amos said, you got to get back to the first commandment in Exodus 20. You should have no other God before me. Because everything that you have, every good and perfect gift. Come from him. Come from him. Yeah. Yeah. And anything you put in front of God, that's your God. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says we need to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with having some nice things. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a douche goot, cabana, is that how they say it? So, so, uh, you, you know I ain't got it because I can't even say it. 
Ain't nothing wrong with some Fendi or Gucci or uh, uh, Polo. Ain't nothing wrong with a Benz or a Lexus or Cadillac. Ain't nothing wrong with diamond in the back, sunroof top, sipping and scene with the gangster. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Long as you don't allow that to get you. Because Jesus even said, I come that you have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, so ain't right. nothing wrong with having it. Just don't let it have you. Yes, so Amos pleased with the people. He said, the Lord has blessed you. But you have moved away, and it's time to return to your closest to God. It's, it's time to start talking to God every day. He said, it's just not good enough to come in here one hour a week expecting you're going to have life all through the week and everything's going to be okay. He said, you've got to get back. You've got to have that oath against you. have got to have the right attitude. You've got to have an attitude of gratitude. You've got to have an attitude of anointing. But they had an attitude of disappointing God. So the prophet begins to deliver a message to them and so God begins to allow some stuff to happen. And so he said, he said, Amen. He said, you know what? Go ahead to Bethel. Go ahead to Gilgal. And keep on sinning. Keep, keep on going in there on Sunday morning and giving your sacrifice and, and giving a little clap and then going back to sinning and doing what you're doing. Keep on with your leavened bread and your offering and the booster. He said, I did all this, but yet. Yeah. You ain't returned to the Lord. He, he said, go on and keep on doing what you're doing. Because God knows that if you keep on sinning, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. So what he's trying to tell them and he's trying to teach them that we have to return to the Lord. He said it in verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 11. Yet you have not returned to the Lord. He allowed their stomachs to go empty, and he said, your teeth are clean. And their teeth was clean because they ain't have nothing to eat. In, in verse 7, he said, I let it rain on this side, but I ain't let it rain on this side. Yet, you still haven't returned to me. He said, I gave water to this side, but I didn't give water to this side. You still couldn't figure it out, and yet you did not return. He said, I stuck your gardens and your vineyards and destroyed them with locusts, but yet you still did not return to the Lord. He said, I allowed your young man to be slain, but yet you still have not returned to the Lord. And if we be careful, if we look at some of the things that happen here, we're dealing with some of the things right now. There's droughts everywhere. There's storms over here and storms over there. Young men are being slain, but yet, why haven't we returned to the Lord? God allows tragedies to transport us into a, a transition to come back to him. The love of God in these days had been neglected and rejected. God had been disrespected. But God still allowed them an opportunity because the key word in there, he said, yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and some of you, you ain't there yet. No matter of fact, ain't none of us there yet. All of us got some work to do. We got to surrender to God. Well, how do you know some people ain't ready? Because we got some people that's going to Bethel and Gilgal. Uh oh, they're they coming. But, but the, they long winded on gospel, but short winded on the gospel. I, I knew it was going to get quiet right there. It's going to get even quieter. I don't care. The invitation is met with rejection. That the people have been convicted, but they haven't been converted. They're, 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 you look around and see people suffering, but you're not sorrowful. You've been afflicted and you've been altered, but you still ain't came to the altar. You're reading scripture, but you're not living scripture. You know better, but you're not doing better. You're coming to church, but ain't no church in you. You're heavenly bound, so there's no earthly good. You've got to learn to give yourself back to God. Their mind was on the Lord, but they didn't give him no time. So he said, keep on doing 
what you're doing. Because if you're not prepared, you want God to move a mountain, but you won't read the Bible. But we, we sung the song, the Lord will make a way somehow, but how are you going to make a way somehow if you won't even pray? You want God to bring you out, but you won't even come in and give him a shout. God said it's time to return. He said, you need to prepare yourself. And even Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you because heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And if you're not prepared to meet him, there is another option. We need to get prepared. I mean, when we come to church, you ought to already be prepared. Uh, deacons ought to already be prepared with a scripture. Uh, the choir ought to be prepared with a song. Ushers ought to be prepared with their uniforms on. People in the pews ought to be ready to praise and pray. We ought to come in here ready. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and to his court with praise. Let us give him some scripture. Let me give you some scripture. God told Moses, I can open up the Red Sea. But you got to prepare to stretch your hand yes. with your staff. Noah had to prepare the ark. The Hebrew boys had to prepare for a fire. David had to prepare with a slingshot. Jonah had to prepare to be in a fish. Moses had to prepare to be in a pit. Jesus said, I would raise Lazarus for the dead, but somebody got to prepare to move the stone. Jesus said, I can feed 5,000, but somebody got prepared me a lunch with two fish and five loaves of bread. That was a woman with an issue of blood, and he said, I prepared to heal her, but she got to be prepared to reach out and touch the hem on my gum. Jesus said, I was a man with a withered hand. I can heal you, but you got to be prepared to lift your hand out. Jesus said, I can turn water into wine, but somebody got to be prepared to put the water in the jug so I can turn it into wine. What are you trying to say? You got to be prepared for your blessing. Are you prepared to be blessed? Are you prepared to be blessed? These people, they were performing and not preparing. Yes. And when we worship, if you perform, you will not be informed. And if you're not informed, you can't be transformed. These people was religious, but they didn't have a relationship. And just because they showing up, just because you show up, you're not impressing God. God wants true worship. The Bible says we got to worship him in spirit and in truth. What God is pleased with is not how dressed up we come, but God is pleased when we're feeding the hungry, when we're visiting the sick, when we're telling somebody about Jesus, when we're giving God's obedience, when we're doing sincere felt prayer, when we're loving on our saints, when we're doing a free will, when we're on the one accord, when there's no animosity, when we're compassionate, when we are turning to the Lord. And what God is telling them and what Amos told them, he said, yet, because when he says yet, he says, I'm giving you another chance. Yes. And if we look around, all of us are recipients of another chance. Oh, somebody needs to give him glory because you didn't come the first time you heard the word. You didn't come the first time you came to church. We went prepared for another chance. And now we have another chance to reconcile. Now we have another chance to get closer to God. This is the day because yesterday is yesterday and we don't know if we'll make it tomorrow. So we got to give them plays today for another chance. So then he says, God, he, he, after he told them, he said, yet they had not returned as I get ready to close. He said, therefore God had a response for the people. In verse 12, he said, therefore Israel, this is what I will do. Because I will do to this, to you, he said, prepare mm -hmm. to meet your God. And I stopped by to let somebody know today, I don't know what you're going through, but you better prepare to 
meet your God. Uh, those two words right in that text right there, he just says two words. He says, I will do to you. And because I will do this to you, he said, you better get ready. Because he said those two powerful words bring redemption. Those two words are theological foundation that we can stand on. Those two words, I will, is comfort. Those two words mean encouragement. That two words mean you can guarantee it. Them two words mean it's certainty. When God said I will, God means I will. Well, how do you know he will? Well, he said I supply all of your needs. I will lift up your bow down head. I will open up doors. I will be there to the end. I will fight your battles. I will make your enemy your footstool. I will hear your cry. I will answer your prayer. I will comfort you. I will save you. I will help you. I will see you through. I'll be there in the morning. I will be there in the evening. I'll be there in the late at night. I will throw up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing. But you've got to get ready. And the reason you got to get ready, for we know these earthly house of tabernacles, they're going to dissolve one day. And in a moment, in a trickling of an eye, we're going to hear the last trumpet. So he said, don't worry. I'll be right there. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And since he said he will, I wonder if anybody said I will. I will keep on calling on the name of Jesus. I will keep on praying his name. I will keep on giving thanks. I keep on worshiping him. I keep on lifting up holy hands. I keep making a joy for Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will pray without season. I will trust in the Lord. I'm prepared for his return. Is anybody prepared for his return? Are you prepared for his return? This I know you ought to be prepared because he said I'm God in all of my glory. I'm God in all of my might. I'm God in all of my splendor. I'm God in all of my power. I'm God that speaks to the world and everything come. He said I took nothing from nowhere and took it somewhere and made it stay there. He said I'm the God that sits high and looks low. I'm the same God yesterday and today. I'm the God that's a word unto your lamp and a light unto your feet. He said I'm the same God that's a heart fixer. I'm the same God that's a mind regulator. I'm the same God that can save you. But do I know I made it prepared? He said, because I sent him down from 42 generations. I prepared him to be born in Bethlehem. I prepared him in waddling clothing. I prepared him to be raised in Nazareth. I prepared him to be baptized in the Jordan. I prepared him to be betrayed by his friends. I prepared for him to be forsaken by his disciples. I prepared for him to walk on water. I prepared for him to heal the blind. I prepared for him to heal the deaf. I prepared for him to go up on a hill called Calvary. I prepared him for nails in his hands. I prepared for nails in his feet. I prepare for him to be lifted up. I prepare for him to say if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I prepare for him to stay there all day Friday. I prepare for him to stay all day Saturday. But do you know why I'm prepared? Because he said early Sunday morning, I got up with all power, heaven and earth in my head. I'm prepared to heal you. I'm prepared to heal you. I'm prepared to heal you. I've got all power. Are you prepared to meet your master? Are you prepared to meet your Lord? I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to tell him he's my own. He's going to give me that joy, unspeakable joy, the joy I have. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. We got to get prepared, y'all. Get prepared, y'all. Is anybody ready to get prepared? Is you ready to get prepared? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. got to prepare for the confirmation and the confirmation is he's coming back don't take my word for it take the word for the word he's coming back and you've got to be prepared if you're not prepared to meet him hell will be your home We all got an opportunity. We all got an opportunity. As we extend an invitation to come to Jesus. If you're not prepared, let today be your day to come to Jesus.
Let him use him, let him use you. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over. When it's all over. Put me in the key you want me in. Sing, baby, sing. No, I shall wear on. a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all When it's all over. Let's join it. Play it. Yours. He did that. He said, son. I'm yeah. going to put on my robe. Tell the story how I made it over. Yeah. 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 I'm going to put on my robe. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Soon. 
pardon of your sins. We don't have long in this world. You got to make up your mind today to do what Jesus says. Trust and believe. Never doubt because he's going to make a way. Trust him and believe or he'll make a way. I'm not a preacher. And I'm not a teacher. But I know what I'm talking about. I've lived a long time. I've seen a lot of things. I know what I'm talking about. Every time I need help, I come to Jesus. He'll make a way for me. He's never left me alone. I'm going to trust him. I'm never going to doubt him. He'll bring you home from the hospital. He'll keep you out of debt. Just put your trust. Put your trust in him. He'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. I'm through. I don't have to do it no more. Because I know you got the idea. You know what I'm talking about. Hey! Thank you, Brother Michael Thank Sparks. You, Michael Sparks. Let's give Mike a hand praise. God bless you. Oh, man. The, devil, the, the devil tried to stop that, but you know what? No weapon formed against us shall prosper because you was already prepared, so the devil couldn't do nothing when you're already prepared. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have our own. Let's make sure you didn't come. She wants to have, she comes for prayer today, realizing the power of prayer. That 20 year old that killed me over July the 4th was my cousin. Please keep Mr. Kidwell in prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord, Lord. Let's come on, let's come on. We're going to ask everybody to stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. If you believe in the power of prayer, stretch forth your hand toward her as we call on God. Because only God in times like this we need. And we have our own sister. I'm just asking for prayer and strength. Uh, it was a year yesterday that my mother passed. And I'm just having a lot of problems. Uh, nothing that God can't handle. Right, right. And nothing that he can't solve. Right, right. But I just miss her so much. And uh, we buried her best friend yesterday. And so it was just a combination of everything. And I just prayed in my strength because I know whose she was. And I know who's I am. Yeah. But I get weak sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just miss her so much. Because when I'm about this time, I go running across the bridge to get back with her. But now, it's something different. I have to look up toward heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I look up toward heaven. I say, thank you, Lord. Because yeah. I don't have a mama or a daddy. But you know what he said? He'd be your mama. Yeah. Your mama's dog. And he said he'd be your father when father's gone. But sometimes I feel like a motherless child, mm -hmm. a long way from home. But I'm just asking because I know the prayers of the righteous avail us much. And just pray for my strength that I can go on another year. It don't get any easier, but at least I can calm down. Amen. Come on. Amen. Let 
just come together as we come to the Lord in prayer. Let's come. Let's go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come right now, Lord, we thank you for these who have come realizing there is power in prayer. Realizing, Lord, there's only some things that prayer can get us through. We can't do it on our own, oh, Father God. We need you, Father God, and we need you more today than we did yesterday. Lord, we're praying for the Shackler family, Father God, and the loss of the loved one, oh, Lord. We pray that you lock your loving arms around that family, oh, Father God, as they prepare for the arrangement, Father God. Lead, guide, and direct, oh, Father God. Let them know that you are God that never leaves them nor forsake them, oh, God. And trust, oh, Father God, that they will just lean to you, oh, Father God. You said in your word, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in for me. So, Father God, we're just praying for that family, oh, Father God, right now, oh, God. We're praying for her. We're praying for all of the members of that family, oh, Father God, that you would bring them together in times like this. It's times like this where family has to stay together. It's times like this that we have to come together as a family and pray together. We have to come together, lock our loving arms around one another, and let them know that we can get through this by, uh, can't get through this by ourselves. And, you know, as they say, God bring you to it. God will help you to get through it. And some stuff we'll never get over, but with the power of God, we can get through it. We just got to trust and believe in him. And then, Lord, we pray for Sister Hope, oh, Father God. And we let her know, Father God, that death cannot take away those memories that Mama gave. Death can't take away those love times that we've had. And, Lord, let them love and that heart be in her, that embedded into her heart. So, Father God, that she can look to the hills with come with the help and know her help coming from you. And just let her know, Father God, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning, oh, Father God because even though they are gone, oh, Father God, we know they're not alone, oh, Father God, because you are with them right now, oh, Father God. And we know one of these old days, oh, Father God, when the weary good quit for resting, oh, Father God, we're going to get to see them again. And what a time we're going to have in them. But right now, we just need your strength, oh, Father God. We need you to lift them up, oh, Father God. Strengthen them from the head of the head to the soles of the feet. Let them know, oh, Father God, that you're right there by, that if they just call on the name of Jesus, and power in the name of Jesus, and strength in the name of Jesus, you can lift them up, oh, Father God. You can carry them on from Day to day, oh, Father God, we know the road gets rough and it gets hard, oh, God, but something happens when we call on Jesus, oh, Father God. Strongholds are broken and chains are broken and strongholds are broken loose and you switch the atmosphere, oh, Father God, to where we can look back over and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, we made it through it another day and this is another day that the Lord has made. So we're going to continue to trust and believe in you, oh, Father God. So be with them, oh, Father God, like your loving arms around them and we'll be so careful to continue to give you the praise give you the honor and give you the glory in the name that is above every name in that alpha and omega in the beginning and end the wonderful counselor the lily in the valley the sweet prince of peace that name is above every name. That, that mediator, that grandmama say he's my all in all. That, that one that is bridge over troubled water. That, that one that I call on in the midnight hour. We're, we're giving it all to you, oh God. We can't make it on your own. We need you and we just can't make it without you, Lord. Be with them, oh Father God. Right now in the name of Jesus and all the saints of God said amen, amen. Let's give God a hand praise for today. Thank you, sir. As we prepare for our communion, communion is for those who have been saved and baptized. We do this in remembrance of what happened on Calvary's cross. We have read it in our responsive reading, but I will read it again. We can never get too much of the word of God. For 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 34, it says, For I receive of the Lord that which I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he is soup, saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let each person examine himself and let them eat this bread and drink this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation among themselves, discerning the Lord's body. It is for this cause many are weak and sickly among us. But if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we will be chastised out of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with this world. Amen. Wherefore, when you come together, eat and tarry one another. And if any hunger, let them eat at home, that you come not together under condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. God's word for God's people, let us pray. Most gracious and all wise God, as we come to the table, this communion table representing what you did on Calvary's cross. Lord, we do this in remembrance of the thorns that was on your head. We do it for the nails that was in your feet and the nails that was in your hands. We do this for the blood that was shed for the remissions of our sins. That now we have a chance to the tree of life. You stayed on the tree so we could have a chance to the tree. We come saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We pray, oh, Father God, as we prepare for this, that everyone examine themselves. And if there's anything unworthy, flush it out and fill us up with your holy righteousness. Allow us to love one another. Be with one another. Be under one accord with one another. Lift up your name with one another. And we'll keep on remembering you because you remembered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together.
said, take this bread, represented for the body, the body that hung on Calvary's cross, that hung there to the veil split in two, to the ground shook, to the moon turned. But while the world aged to forget, let's see the remembrance of our Lord. Amen. Likewise, he said, take this cup, represented for the blood, that when the Sincerian pierced him to the side, he said, surely, 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 this must be the Son of God. And while we take this, remembering what could wash away our sins, what could make us whole again, Nothing but the blood. And while the world drinks to forget, let's drink in remembrance of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise as we Thank prepare you, for our announcements. <laughs> Any first time visitors this morning? If so, would you please stand and have a word? Any first time visitors? Seeing that we have none, our announcements for this week are as follows. On this Saturday, July 16th, from 10 to 1, we will be having our uh, backpack giveaway sponsored by our Brotherhood. And we also will be uh, having a health fair sponsored by our missionary. So we're asking you, please, sir, please, ma'am, come out. Bring your children. There will be something for everyone. Come on out and get your blood check, uh, blood pressure checks, uh, diabetes, whatever. Because you know what? We, we as a people tend to put our health last. Amen. So put yourself first on that day and come on out and get your health uh, checked. Also, on next Sunday is our missionaries' annual day. The theme is this day we will serve our Lord. And our speaker is Reverend Geneva Nelson from St. Stephen's Baptist Church. And then our own Brother Gillespie will be giving the word. So come out and support our uh, missionary. They are asking that all, uh, everyone please wear white for that day. And they're asking for a donation of $10. And as I was saying about our health, how important our health is, got one question for you. Do we love our pastor? Amen. Amen. He has stated that he has some ongoing health issues. So uh, at our meeting, officers meeting on Wednesday, we decided to give our pastor one day of rest a week. So we are asking you, Hard Chapel members, to please refrain from calling him, emailing him, texting him, contacting him anyway on Tuesdays. Not just, uh, we're going to start this week, but not just this Tuesday, Tuesday until we give you further notice. We also want you to keep praying for healing for our pastor. Yeah, yeah. We already know that the prayers of the righteous avail us much. Yeah. And if we can't pray for our pastor, who can we pray for? So again, we're asking you not to contact him on Tuesdays. Instead of contacting our pastor, if you have an emergency, please contact our own Deacon William Powell. Amen. 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 If he will deem, if it's necessary, he will call the pastor and let him know what's going on. So we're asking you, instead of calling our pastor, to call Brother William Powell. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Deacon Powell. Deacon. Amen. All right. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday. What day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, spread the word. And this is an a act of love. This is an act of love. We're not controlling you. This is an act of love. Thank you. And our birthdays for this week on Monday are on Tina Victor. Amen. Amen. And on Wynn Thursday, in love and memory of Sister Noreen Wynn. Happy birthday. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Edith Groves, and I'm standing in the absence of our youth ministry president, Sister Harris. At this time, I would like for Deshaun Groves to come up. my grandson Amen. and this is my first grandson who graduated and um, I'm so proud of him church um, there has been a curse been lifted off of my family with with his grandfather and his father before them and his father for them who did not was not who did not or was not able to graduate and I am just so proud that God has broke that chain out of my family that the first boy, the first boy in my family has graduated. And his name is Jay Sean. And on behalf of a pastor and the entire Harris Chapel Church family and the youth ministry, I would like to present this token appreciation and congratulations on this big step in your life. Would you like to say something? Take your mask off. <laughs> say your name and where you're going. My name is Jay Sean Groves, and um, I am going to Campbellsville for football, and um, I appreciate it. <laughs> Amen. To God be glory. You got something to give this to you as well, and I am an alumni of Campbellsville, so I, I, it's all good in the neighborhood. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Allow God to lead you. Go be great. We're all praying for you. We're all supporting you. And we just anticipate and get the word of all the great things that God has in store for you. Let's just give him a hand praise for his graduation. And as we do with all our graduations, we always we want to leave him out with a word of prayer. So let us pray for him right now. Father God in heaven, as he steps out, oh, Father God, we need you to be with him, oh, Father God. When mom and dad and everybody, nobody else is around, he can call on the name of Jesus, oh, Father God. We pray, oh, Father God, for, his, for Sister Edith, oh, Father God. It's just a phone call away, and they can call on Jesus any day. We want to ask that, let them know that the church is still right here with them, oh, Father God, that everybody's praying for him. And we just anticipate, oh, Father God, in the next couple of years that he is going to grow up to be the man that you would have him to be, oh, Father God order his steps in the way that he should go oh father god and just let him know that to train up a child in the way they should go when they get old they should not depart from him and he'll look back over everything that happened and he said greater is he that is in me in other world and he will be a great success in life so we pray for him oh father god as he moves forward touch him in a mighty way we thank you and we love you in jesus mighty name we pray and all the people of god said amen We are ready for benediction. I have one more uh, certificate to give out. Um, where my little man at? Where Lester at? Come here, Lester. One of our newest members here. We come get Lester. All right. We, this is for you. It says the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Certificate of Membership. Certificate proudly for me to Lester Shackford as being a full member of the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church today, July the 10th, 2022. Let's give them a hand. Praise for our newest member. God bless you. Let's stand right here as we have the benediction. Let us stand for the benediction in the prayer. <laughs> Let us stand for the benediction in the prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, that we are preparing ourselves, Father God, for the return of the Lord. Realize that one day he's coming back for us, oh, Father God. So we just pray that everyone do what they need to do, oh, Father God, to be in a right standing, Father God. As the song said, we're going to sweep around our own front door, Father God, and get clear that there ain't no rocks crying out. We can hear our name called, oh, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We pray as the one travels off the cottage, oh, Father God, that you be with them, oh, Father God. We thank you for Brother Lester, our newest member, oh, Father God, and we pray for each and every one at the sound of our voice. Keep with us, oh, Father God. Lord, we thank you 
you for the offering that we have received, oh Father God. May it be used for the uplifting of thy kingdom. We thank you for each and every one that had to give and those who wanted to give that just didn't have it, oh Father God. We just thank you, oh Father God, this day for being such a mighty good God. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless to the only wise God, both dominion, power, and glory. Henceforth and forevermore in all of the saints of God, saying,